Welcome back to the MQTT Essentials. In this chapter, we are going to talk about clients, brokers, and connection establishment. As we have seen in the last video, we have at least two components in each publish subscribe situation. We have clients and we have a broker. And a client, of course, can be a subscribing client, a publishing client, or both. So, if you want to implement your own client on your MQT application, you either can implement the MQT protocol from scratch, which is not recommended, or you're using one of the open source libraries which are available. Examples for this is the Eclipse Paho ecosystem, and they have libraries for Java, for C, for C Sharp, C++, for Python, but also languages like Rust. Or you go to the HivenQ ecosystem where we have a Java library which was developed to, together with BMW to build a reliable and massively scalable Java library used for embedded devices as well as for servers. So there's plenty of choice here to implement. And then, of course, you need a broker. And a broker, as we have seen, is responsible for receiving messages, filtering messages, determining who is subscribed to each of the messages, and then sending the message to each subscribed client. And this at a massive scale. So for brokers, there is in the open source ecosystem, there's Eclipse uh, Mosquito available. But there are also commercial offerings available like HivenQ, with the commercial MQTT broker, which is used by a lot of Fortune 500 companies for professional deployments, but there's also an open source broker available from HiveMQ itself. So if you have both of the components, how do you start the, the connection? How do you actually connect the client to the broker? So the first, that will, what needs to happen is your client will establish a TCP connection to the broker. And if you also have security enabled, you can also use TLS, so you have an encrypted communication channel. And as soon as this is established, then the MQTT connect flow will start. So what will happen is the MQTT client will send a MQTT connect packet to the broker. The broker will then do authentication authorization. So it, it tries to understand, are you able to connect are you allowed to connect? And what kind of permissions does your client have? And then the client will receive a so-called CONARC packet. So let's look at the connect packet in detail. So our connect packet consists of many different properties. Number one, there's a client identifier. And be aware, this needs to be unique. A client identifier identifies your client uniquely. You can optionally use uh, the username and password field. So you can carry your credentials. And this is, by the way, also used if you don't have any, um, let's say, username and password-based authentication. But if you have a token-based authentication, you can also use the password field for carrying this kind of information. Then we have last will and testament information. We have a video about this, what this means. And we have keep alive information for heart beating. But we have also a video here which describes in detail what this enables. And last but not least, the client indicates with the clean session flag if the client wants to have a clean session or if it wants to have a persistent session. And a clean session basically is if the client disconnects again, that the broker will forget the client. And a persistent session means that the broker will recognize the client and it will basically reuse the session as soon as the client reconnects. So the client, for example, doesn't lose any messages in case it was disconnected for a while. But we will also talk about this in detail in a later video. So and after the broker does the authentication authorization of this connect packet, it sends back a CONARC. And a CONARC is a very simple packet. It basically tells the client, is it allowed to connect or is it not allowed to connect? So in case the authentication authorization was successful, then you will get a CONARC return code, which tells you it was successful. And in case something bad happened or you were not allowed to connect to this broker, you will get a return code with the actual reason code what went wrong. And as soon as this connection is established and you have a, a valid connect back from a broker, the client can start doing 
publishing, doing subscribing, or it can issue any of the other commands we will see in the next videos. If you don't want to miss any video, subscribe below. We will release one video a week on our MQTT Monday. So if you want to make sure to get each video into your inbox, please subscribe below. And we will talk about how publishing and how subscribing works and other features in the next videos. So stay tuned. And yeah, let's see you next video.